Okay. I like that little throw. I want to practice that okay. for a minute when I'm done. With this one. Yes. <laughs> Why does interracial marriage continue to be a major sticking point within some Pentecostal churches? What is the appropriate stance on the subject? Interestingly, we had this conversation earlier today. Did we have it today? Yeah, it was today okay. that we were talking about how I grew up and things that I overheard. Oh, yeah. And that's right. A, a statement that you heard made um, mm -hmm. yes. in the in the South. Yes. And so the idea that the idea that what the question phrases as interracial marriage is still a big no no in many apostolic churches and circles. Uh, unfortunately, I wouldn't limit it to. It's not just you're right, but yeah. This ideology of, of, I would describe it this way. I would say that there are many white families, and we'll just use white and black here for, for the example. I would say there's many white families that would prefer their children to marry white folks. So then the question is, why would they have them marry or only desire to marry those of the same color. I think there would be some that would say it's it's for cultural reasons. Yeah, it's it's because the kids, you know, they don't want the kids to be uh, mistreated. Cultural reasons, you don't know that culture that well, etc. Then the question is: Is this racism or is this biasness? Yeah, and I, I think both are applicable. I think both are are um, probably factual. I think some of it is rooted in some type of systemic racism. Yeah. And I think um, part of it is is rooted in bias. So the example that I would give you is um, if you went to Israel and if you went to Jamaica. Yeah. If you go to those two um, countries, you would have a favorite. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So that would be a bias. Or a pre preference. A preference. Yeah. Correct. But it's, it's still a bias. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, um, I'm not a beach guy. Yeah. I can almost, I've never been to Jamaica. I have been to Israel. I've been to Jamaica, so. Okay, well, there you go. But I haven't been to Israel. Okay. So. so, I would, I, I'm pretty sure I would prefer Israel more to than Jamaica. I would prefer Jamaica. And um, it's a bias, it's preference, etc. So, I don't believe that there are many that are rooted in racism. But but it is systemic to a, a certain degree. Yeah. I believe many are, are rooted in bias, yeah. and the bias is is because of, of a lack of knowledge. It's of ignorance. Culture. It's ignorance. Well, there's so much. There so much. This generalization. Yeah. There's so much different than us. But uh, just cutting to the chase, we are all one people. Yes. God created us in His image. I see absolutely no reason why a white person couldn't marry a black person. And I think this has to change. Yeah. It has to change quickly. Um, I, I don't think we, we necessarily need to, to say, is there any scripture that, uh, that, is in the script, or that is in God's word that says we can't? I mean, is there any scripture that says, yeah, is there any scripture that says we can't marry someone of another race? Yeah. And you won't find it. Well, I'm going to get a little, like, technical and... Okay. Like word nerdy here for a second. All right, go for it. I think the whole idea of the phrase interracial presupposes something that's unbiblical to start with. I don't believe in race. Yeah, so the, the term yeah. race is defined as descendants of a common ancestor. And so it's a Darwinistic concept. Exactly. Yeah. So it's it's inherently non Christian terminology. Right. Non theistic terminology and more importantly, non Christian terminology. So that if in a biblical worldview that I see every human being coming from one set of creative parents, Adam and Eve, it is impossible for there to be more than one race. So the whole concept of interracial marriage is 
a biblical and theological impossibility. It's Acts 17 where the writer says, he hath made of one blood mm -hmm. all nations of men to dwell upon all the face of the earth. So first of all, the, uh, the question of interracial marriage presupposes a, a flawed theological concept. In a Christian uh, theology, interracial marriage is an impossibility. If you are marrying a human, you yes. are not interracially married. And uh, another, like a secondary uh, technical nerdy point, and I understand that how we uh, culture has programmed us to say black and white, but yes. the reality is, is you're not a white guy. No, I'm not. You're you're a light brown guy. Right. And uh, black people aren't you're black. You're a white guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm not even really, no, I'm not, not even white. This no. paper is white. I'm you're not. Cream. Yeah, exactly. And so it is a, it is a, um, it's, it's a fact that every human on the planet is some shade of brown. Yes. So every human on this planet is some shade of brown. So when people say, like, I was raised up in the South here, and I think people ought to marry their own color. Well, we're all the same color. We're just different shades of that one color. So the question then becomes, how many shades off do you have to be, be before that marriage becomes inappropriate? Correct. And so we are one race. We are one color. We are, uh, we are one people. And so that whole idea of interracial marriage is, is a, is a flows out of a flawed ideology that we've accepted from a, a Darwinian evolution, evolutionistic, um, uh, worldview. And so being raised in the South, I know for a fact, of course, we were raised in different areas of the country. Right. You're a Midwest, Northern Midwest guy. I was raised in Louisiana, Mississippi. And I know for a fact that systemic racism that goes beyond bias, uh, bias exists in many so-called Christian and apostolic churches. Correct. Um, I had a pastor, I had a pastor in Mississippi tell me that there's no way that I can allow black people to attend my church. I would I would support someone coming in to start a black church in my city, but I can't let black people come to my church. And even for even for this kind of format, I will not repeat some of the comments that I've sure. that I told you earlier. But uh, the worst one that I feel comfortable kind of repeating is I remember as a teenage boy sitting in a restaurant after uh, a church service. Uh, with my parents and the the pastor and his wife, and overhearing the past the pastor's wife point out some black people across the restaurant and made the statement that black people don't even have souls, and so this kind of this kind of language and and ideology was commonplace uh, among Christians where I grew up in the South, and I find that uh, it's repulsive. It's repulsive and it's disgusting. Ungodly. And unless repentance is had, that that kind of repentance will be, or that kind of sin and racism will be judged harshly uh, by God in the judgment. And that's just um, not acceptable for a Holy Ghost Christian to hold those kinds of worldviews. Agreed. I, I would. <clears throat> I do want to add this. I think this is important because the question. Repeat that question real quick. Why does interracial marriage continue to be a major sticking point within some Pentecostal churches? Okay. So really, I, I think the answer to the question is, is more than what we've, we've talked about already. Yeah. We're talking about church government, church structure, and church organization, and the idea of this interracial marriage uh, marriages. Okay. The reason why I believe it's, it's such a, uh, a hot topic, even still today, is because churches, sadly, are very much segregated, even to this day. Yeah. So the the real issue is, is not so much marriage. It's it's the segregation. It's the ideology uh, of, of of blacks going to, to, to church and black churches yes. and white churches. Because the fact of the matter is, if you mix a male and a female, no matter what color they are, yeah. they will begin to fall in love with each That's other. That's right. Right. Love knows no color. <laughs> That's right. That's the truth. And so... Um, the problem is white churches 
and black churches have a hard time integrating. Yes. And I think there, there's a reason. This is why I fall back on the cultural idea more than the color idea at yeah. this point. I mean, we, we've come leaps and bounds in the United States and North America. Yeah. Uh, it's not so much the color barrier anymore. It's the cultural barrier. Yeah. So the so, so we don't play music like they play music. There it is. And right. like our, our, our worship styles and our... Um, our uh, even our church government and structural uh, styles of of having church, our ecclesiology, yes, uh, is different, and and so again, it goes to what you were saying earlier that there are preferences that correct that certain groups have for particular styles of of worship and music and church and and the way they do things, and so. And it's and it's not like you say it's not just a color issue; it's a cultural issue. Because even for me, as a Southern uh, white male, um, there are Northern type ways of having church in white Northern churches that I just don't resonate with. It it drives me crazy because it's not the cultural way of um, of expressing worship that I was used to. Uh, being raised in the South, so it's it's not a culture, it's not a color issue, it's a cultural issue. Yes, it it really is. When churches become integrated, that question falls away about marriage. It, it just it's going to happen. Yeah, but churches must become integrated, and if they are going to become integrated, there must be a desire to learn and to understand cultures that don't look like your culture, that don't act like your culture. It does not mean. And, and I think this is an important part. It does not mean that you will love that type of music that's associated with that yeah. culture or even like it to a certain yeah. degree. Yeah. But you have to accept it. You have learn to, to appreciate, appreciate it. it. So that because Africans or North Americans or Asians or Hispanics are created in the image of God, there's something about their cultural expressions that that reveals something about the nature of God, the something about the attributes of God. And so when we only limit our worship experiences to one particular cultural right. expression, then there then we're missing components of divine creativity yes. that God intends for the body of Christ to have. And so when we bring those uh, diverse cultures within one congregational setting it reveals more of of the uh the nature of god than what you have whenever you just have one particular cultural dynamic yes agreed and we can again well, talk we, we, we can we talk can about this forever yes all right so that one's going i'm horrible you're at really that. Bad at that. <laughs> okay so here is the next one should we teach against watching television and movies or should we teach watching certain content. So I, the, the question should probably be a little more detailed. Um, should we teach against watching television and movies or should we teach against watching certain content? So, so, so I could reframe it. Should we preach against uh, the particular device or technology or should our, our approach to what we view be content based right because this right this right anything i i mean i got a tv right here in my hand mm -hmm. i can watch any tv on any kind any tv program on any any network or cable channel i can watch on my phone right so i don't have a tv in the classical sense of the word with this device and so uh, at some point, it has to. We have to shift away from a device-based uh, approach to what what we do. It, it has to, at some point, shift to a content-based. I think practice. first we've got to qualify the question. Yeah. Um, to the audience, I will say this: the Scripture teaches against adultery, yes. lying, murder, etc. Yes. Scripture is very clear about many of these things. Yes. And so I start there. If something that we're entertained by um, is, is something that directly goes against God's holy script, yes. then, then we should be very careful 
Yes. As Christians, as followers of Christ. Um, and so I think this question derives from that concept yes. that there are things on television and in movies yes. that would go against the teachings of, of, of God's Word. Absolutely. And so I think one thing as a Christian, <coughs> as an apostolic, uh, we can be very hypocritical in yeah. what we preach and teach and the way we convey the gospel yeah. if we are taking pleasure and yeah. entertained yes. by someone else doing the sinning for us. Yes, exactly. So, so I think that so Romans, the question. Yeah, yeah, Romans says, not only they that do them, yes. but them that have pleasure, pleasure in them that do them. Yes. And so when you are taking pleasure, and, and I think this is an important distinction to be made too. So so when I'm viewing something or maybe even, even an audio book, uh, which is a form of entertainment for many people, that not necessarily that there is um, adultery in that film or that book, but how does it portray it? Does it glorify it? Does it glorify it or does it condemn it? Right. So in Scripture, I'm reading about adultery with David and Bathsheba. Yes. But the way that Scripture portrays that adultery is that it isn't glorifying it as something that's that's cool that that a person should have the freedom freedom to do and so so if a particular sin is in a film or a book mm -hmm. does does it glorify it or does it condemn it what is what is the way in which that particular sin is being portrayed in that that film or that book yes i, I think that's the point i mean uh, adultery is real scripture talks about it yeah david and bathsheba is there uh, lying is real. We can't ignore these things. Um, yeah. Cheating. War is real. Yeah. Does it glorify war? Yeah. Does it does it glorify the the, the person that that killed fifty people in the name of of a regime that's ungodly? Exactly. So th those are things that that I think are necessary to understanding the question. Yeah. So with all of that in context, should we teach against? being that television and movies are certainly vehicles by which ungodly ideologies are brought into a home. Should we teach against watching a television or having a television in your home, boycotting Hollywood altogether, or should we teach against watching certain context or, or content? Rather? I, I think for me, the only, the only appropriate way to respond to that and, to deal with it uh, in the world we live in is a content-based approach to uh, what people view and allowing the Holy Spirit to do something more than make you talk in tongues, and that's convict you of convict you of sin when you sin, and mm -hmm. allowing the Spirit to actually be that that convictor in in the Christian's life. And just recently, I don't even remember what it was. It was on my iPad. But I was viewing a, a particular uh, content, and uh, when a, a particular uh, a particular scene came up, and I forget what it was on, um, even what it was. But as soon as it came up, it was something that was in, uh, presented in a way that contradicted the Word of God, and I immediately clicked out of that that video and stopped watching it. And so it was on my phone or my iPad. So it was irrelevant, the medium or the device. What was important to me was that was a that was a particular agenda that was in conflict with my with my Holy Ghost and my Christianity. And so um, I stopped watching it immediately. Right. Uh, I agree. So I I would I would not teach against a particular device, yeah. especially in this case. A, a, television or a monitor mm -mm. Um, and and the reason why um, due to the cultural shift and the changes in society over the past 20 30 years is as you said your phone is a, is a television yeah and if there's one thing that that is very I, I think it's of utmost importance today is the one again intellectual honesty and two consistency yeah a preacher or a teacher, a husband, a wife, a father, a mother. Number one priority. They need to be honest, intellectually honest. Yeah. 
and one A or one B, yeah, they must, they absolutely must be consistent. Yeah, it's very hard in yeah. in this ever shifting culture and really in this this generation of knowledge and technology. Yeah. So, um, is a television going to to send anyone to hell? Absolutely no. not. No more than your phone is going to send no. anyone to hell. No. What you've got to ask yourself is. Is there redeeming qualities? Yeah. Is there is there is there redeeming qualities on this particular device? I do not have a television in my home. Yeah. Because I simply think that that everything I need is is found here. I can yeah. get everything I need right here. Um, and so there's not enough redeeming qualities for me on the television for me to have a television yeah. in my home. I just don't have it. But I will go a little further. And say, is that the case with everyone? I would strongly su suggest to my local assembly that that you not have a television. However, um, there's a, a man in my church that's a, a stock analyst. Yeah. So he writes um, for uh, magazines and and certain reports from a company that gives stock advice. Well, there's a finance channel. Yeah. Uh, you know, on, on television, that is real time. It's it's actually a better way of news. It's a it's a better um, avenue of news than reading fifty articles. Yeah, exactly. From fifty different websites. Yeah. So, um, would I have a problem with it? Absolutely not. No, I wouldn't. Um, and there is there are several things that that have good content. Yeah. And, and technology is quickly shifting to where it's not like the old days where you had to buy uh, a cable package where you had to get all these channels mm -hmm. that many of them contained inappropriate content. Television is quickly becoming an a la carte type of uh, you can buy the channel that you want and leave out the rest. Correct. And so, so TV is quickly shifting to that kind of technological dynamic yes. to where I don't have to have the HBO or the uh, various other channels that are going to consistently um, show programming that's in conflict with with biblical Christianity. Yes. And if we're preaching against a device, man, as quick as technology develops, I mean, when you make a legalistic rule about a device, there's always going to be a, a, a loophole to say, well, this isn't that device, so I can watch it on this device yes. because pastor only preaches against this device. And so I don't have enough time or energy to keep up with all of the technology inventions no. to, to preach against devices. Yes. And so, uh, you know, I watch things that are television in the very classical sense of the word. There's going to be Fox News that, I can get on my phone. That's, I mean, that's just television. That's all there is to it. It's a cable TV channel. Mm -hmm. And so I will watch Fox News on my phone. There are live Fox News broadcasts that come over social media um, uh, outlets like Facebook and various other types of social media. And so asking the question, do I watch TV in the classic sense of the word? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I watch Fox News and other, other types of, uh, TV media that are appropriate. Well, there are those. There are those that preach against television and movies that that only watch television and movies in three minute clips. <laughs> exactly <laughs> on YouTube, and that's okay. So, no. Yeah, the, uh, as long as it's not live. If right. I can go to YouTube and watch uh -huh. that that Fox News interview, then it's yes. fine. As long as it's it's not live. Yeah. So I don't watch movies. I watch clips. clips. A friend, clips. a friend of mine, a friend of mine told a uh, uh, another pastor. He's like, "Yeah, I I only watch ninety minute clips. If, if any anything over ninety minutes, I appreciate." It. <laughs> so the answer for me is no. It's not about the device. It's, it's about, about content. content. And just on a, on another, I, this is religious, but it's non -relig It's it's mostly non religious in many people's eyes. I believe it was the CEO of, of Apple said that sitting down is the new cancer. And what he means by that is those that fall into the category where they're addicted to device, they're addicted to, to 
you know, let's not stop at television or movies or we're sitting on the couch playing video games. Video games, even people it's, that It's are... the new cancer. Yeah. And health professionals would say, the more you sit, the earlier you're going to die. So yeah. get up and do something. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So that's that one. I guess you get to go. You know what? Before you do that, let's take a break. All right. Holy grounds.